Don't go to Iraq. Don't go. This country faces instability. Including armed conflicts. Terrorism and civil unrest. Which can make travel dangerous. Why not go to Iraq? And welcome to the channel, Iraq. Why go to Iraq? And the answer to that is very simple. Why not? Today, we're going to delve into a little bit of the history of Iraq and my personal experience. But first, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you to you, to you subscribers. 1,500 subscribers in four months. Wow, what an achievement. And it really does motivate me to do more. And I have some fantastic content coming to this channel in the future. So stick around. And if you haven't already, go on. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button and show some love. Without further ado, let's get in straight into the video. A brief history of Iraq. We're going to take a look at ancient Mesopotamia, the Islamic Golden Age, the Mongol invasion and the Ottoman rule, 20th century and independence, the Saddam Hussein era and post ISIS and current challenges. Today, Iraq remains a country with vast potential due to its riches and resources, especially oil, but it continues to face significant hurdles on the path to stability and prosperity. And why is that? Probably because the West are just not letting the country move forward. The United States of America still have a real chokehold on the country. And I believe that it's, it's really putting, it's really hindering its progression. Iraq's history dates back to ancient Mesopotamia, often called the cradle of civilization. Located between the Tigris and Euphrates River, this region was home to some of the earliest humans. Mental, including the Sumerians, the Akkadians, Babylonians, and the Assyrians. And these cultures contributed immensely to human civilization, to human history. Developing writing, the wheel, and early forms of government and law, such as Humerable's Code. I have tried to get that right so many times, and if I haven't, I do apologize, forgive me. And then Iraq moves on to the Golden Age, the Islamic Golden Age. In the seventh century, Iraq became part of the Islamic Caliphate after the Muslim conquests. The city of Baghdad, founded in 762 CE by the Abbas, Caliphate and very fast, very quickly became part of the Islamic Golden Age and very fast became the center of the Islamic Golden Age. Baghdad was a hub of learning, culture, and commerce, attracting scholars from across the Islamic world. And moving on into the future, they faced the Mongol, the Mongol invasion, and the Ottoman rule. In 1258, Baghdad faced an invasion of Mongols, leading to a significant decline in the region's influence. Over the following centuries, Iraq was part of various empires, including the Prisian Safid Empire and the Ottoman Empire, which controlled the region from the 16th century right through to the early 20th century. 20th century and Iraq's independence. After World War I, the Ottoman Empire collapsed and Iraq was placed under the British mandate by the League of Nations. In 1932, Iraq gained formal independence, but the British influence still remained strong. The country was a monarchy till 1958, when a military coup established a republic, the Ba'athist era and Saddam Hussein. In 1968, a Ba'ath party took control of Iraq, leading to the rise of Saddam Hussein, who became president in 1979. Saddam's rule was marked by repression, wars, and the use of chemical weapons against both foreign enemies and his own people. The Iran-Iraq war spanned from 1980 to 1988, and the invasion of Kuwait in 1990, which led to the Gulf War. This devastated Iraq's economy and infrastructure. In 2003, a US-led coalition invaded Iraq, citing Saddam's alleged possession of weapons of mass destruction. And Saddam's regime was very quickly toppled, but the country descended into violence, with sectarian conflict, insurgency tearing the nation apart, and the invasion led to the rise of groups such as Al-Qaeda, 
and then later ISIS. Post ISIS and current challenges. By 2017, ISIS was largely defeated in Iraq, but the country has struggled with political instability, corruption, and economic challenges. The Iraq government to this day faces ongoing challenges and issues, including balance and relationships with the US and neighboring Iran, addressing the demands of various sectarian groups and rebuilding a nation that's deeply scarred by decades of conflict. And today, Iraq remains a country with a vast amount of potential due to its riches and in resources, especially oil. But it continues to face significant hurdles on the path to stability and prosperity. Hope you learned something from that. Because when I was researching this, I certainly did. So it was a bit of an eye opener for me personally. But why did I go to Iraq? Well, I'll tell you why I went to Iraq. I went to Iraq because I love history, culture, architecture, good food, and Iraq has all of the above. So why did I decide? Decide to go to Iraq against all advice. Why not? I wanted to go and see with my own two eyes what was going on in this country that we are scaremongered away from. When you've got various authoritarian websites giving advice to no travel, do not travel, tra all of a sudden you'll travel, don't have no Whatever it may be, I wanted to see it with my own two eyes and I was blown away and I am glad that I made the decision to book that flight and go over there because what a wonderful and amazing experience it was. And I can 100% tell you that we have been lied to because the bad they have in that country, we have just equally as bad. And I'm not talking about the immigrants coming over and stuff like that. I'm talking about our own people. Look at some of the stars that we've idolized, we've looked up to, we've followed, we've paid money to watch, and they're getting court cases left, right, and center for you know what. Children should be left alone, right? And I think it happens in, in many countries in Europe, and it happens over there, and it's not just the immigrants, it is our own people as well. So don't throw stones when we live in glass houses. That's all I'm gonna say. Getting to Iraq was simple as going on to Google Flights, typing in the credentials. There you go, 380 pound for a flight. I decided to pick some posh fillet steak meals and I wanted extra leg room, so I paid extra. So all in all, it ended up costing me 480 pound. And that was with a layover of a couple of hours in Turkey. And then flying from Turkey to, to Baghdad International Airport, landing and being blown away straight away. The facilities, the airport was absolutely gorgeous. You know, it had all the big, the roof just looked like one big chandelier. It was absolutely breathtaking, absolutely crackers and as i made my way through to security we then come to the visa on arrival waiting area where we had to fill in a little bit of paperwork give our passport pay 80 us dollars in cash and i think i sat and waited for about 35 minutes and then the guy come over he'd signed and stamped me paperwork straight through security taxi men were there waiting hello hello taxi taxi bop, bop, bop. there are cheaper taxis that you can get during the daytime but i landed at like three o'clock in the morning so i i just bit the bullet and got one of them but again it was only like 40 dollars 40 american dollars i paid for the taxi and it was an absolute belter of a and it was a lovely vehicle and the driver was very pleasant sort of talking away in english and playing English music, playing some Iraqi music. It was brilliant. And as we were driving down to the hotel, which I think was about 25 minutes away, he drove past Liberty Square at night time and it was just lit up. It was absolutely gorgeous. Pulled up to the hotel, check-in was swift and fast. And I actually didn't have money, enough money for the hotel because I thought they were going to take it out of my bank because I booked it on booking.com, but they take cash. So top tip, make sure you take enough dollars. If for, for the five days I was there, $500 would have been ample, probably would have come back with change as well. But yeah, make sure you bring enough dollars, top tip, bring enough dollars. I'll leave the tips that I give throughout this video in the description. 
so you can go down there and have a little read if you if you feel like you would like to go to Iraq I'll just leave a few bits and bobs a few bits of nuggets of information in the description make sure you take enough American dollars and that way you can take it to one of the many Western Union exchanges and get a good rate for your dollars but because if you go to the cash machines in the supermarkets and stuff like that you get a, you get a charge so to save yourself some money and get better rates bring a good amount of American dollars and with us getting this so early in the morning the plan was just then to go to sleep get some good rest have a lie in the body is rested and you're good to go but naturally I just woke up extra early i just wanted to get out on my feet for the first day and see what was what throughout the stay in iraq i planned to get to some of the markets get to al mutanabi street i wanted to try some of the local foods i wanted to get the overnight sleeper train to basra i just wanted to walk around have no plan i just literally was knew the things that i wanted to try and i was just on foot just walking around, absorbing the culture. And the one thing that overwhelmed me almost straight away was how polite and how welcoming and how kind and given the people of Baghdad were from the get-go. So that was just, so it was absolutely, ple so it was pleasant. We couldn't go to Basra on this trip because the day that I'd left to do that content, to get that content, I got to the train station. And if you've watched that video, I'll leave, the links will be in the description. I got turned away by the army guards because I had shorts on. Because in government buildings, in government establishments, and government-run organizations, you are not allowed to wear shorts, you have to wear pants. And I did not bring a pair of pants. It was English. It gets 10 degrees and we've got our shorts on. So I thought it's going to be like 35, 40 degrees. So I did not bring a pair of pants with me. So top tip, bring some pants with you or buy some in good time before you go and take part in some of these activities. And we did get to go to some markets. We went to the big market by Liberty Square, which was fantastic. Some of the stuff that's on show in their markets, night vision, goggles, like sniper sights, armored chess rigs with magazines for rifle. Oh my God, nightsticks, knives, you name it. Absolutely crackers and littered all the way up with street food vendors for the pomegranate juice, the fresh orange juice. Oh, out of this world on a, on a 40 degree day, having freezing cold, fresh pomegranate juice was just <laughs> and the Wada supermarket. Wow. It was just, it was just, you know, I know it's only a supermarket, and some people will say in the comments, it's only a supermarket. What are you getting all excited for? I was in Baghdad, Iraq, walking around the supermarket, or supermarket, as I say on the video. <laughs> and it just had all, all, it, it, it just wasn't, it, it was just amazing. And the staff, in, the staff, were just amazing letting me film you know there was no no complaining they all wanted to get in the videos again i'll leave the video in in the description and it should pop up on the bottom here yeah go and check that video out what a fantastic time it was you know we got to al mutanabi street which is a street that's littered again with loads of market stalls but it's a little bit more upmarket it's where all the scholars all the, all the writers poets you know all the academics go and you could clearly see that on the video again i've got a video for that as well so if you want to go and check that out go head over to the channel and check out the iraq playlist again i'll leave a link in the comments for it but yeah it was just a fantastic day out again going to that market and, and just experiencing a bustling busy market in the heart of baghdad we also got a kebab one night late at night and ah, oh, what a chicken shawarma if you like it was just out of this world I had a little walk Oh, oh, through back streets and crossroads, found this place. Oh, it was just, it was out of this world. Amazing. And again, I've got a video for that, so go and check that out. Now, I only had five days, four if you count the day that we lost because of the early morning arrival. And there was so much more that I wanted to get done. And I will be visiting, I, and I will be returning back to Iraq very, very shortly. And I've had a few subscribers reach out, offering me all types of hospitality, help and advice. So I think the next time that I go, I'm gonna be going for a lot longer and I'm, the content is gonna be off the scale. 
But what a fantastic journey, adventure it was. It was mind blowing. And if you're someone that needs stimulating like me, I would highly recommend booking that flight and going over there and experiencing it for yourself. I highly recommend it. It was just amazing. Is the Bruce YouTube channel Instagram and TikTok. If you ever want to see Iraq in a humorous way for what it really is, go and check his channel out. And he's got some interesting stuff on there lately from recent news that I think it's important that everyone goes and takes a look at. I had a fantastic time. It couldn't have been better. And the people were amazing. You know, given what that nation, what them people have been through, and for them to treat me the way they did, it was overwhelming. And I really, really couldn't thank the people of Baghdad enough. I really couldn't. They made that journey what it was. This was just the short. So to finish off the video, I just want to say top tips. Make sure you bring enough American dollars. Make sure you get an eSIM for Turkey and Iraq. Two separate eSIMs. It'll make your life a lot easier if you do it beforehand. And I'll leave a link in the description for the companies that I used and I'll pop them up on the screen as well. I, I just I really, I can't stress enough how important the eSIMs are because you'll see on the video of me going there, I had an absolute drama, but next time I'll be dialed in. And so were you for watching this video. Hotel on booking.com nine times out of ten they're not going to take it out of your bank they're going to want cash at property so just bear that in mind and they don't say it online either my accommodation that i stayed in was fairly budget i tried to keep the cost down as much as i can but oh my god there are some amazing hotels you have some with massive multiple swimming pools saunas jacuzzis you know there are some amazing hotels but i chose to keep it budget and what it was it was fit for purpose. The air conditioning was on point. The staff in the hotel were amazing, absolutely amazing. So I just want to give a big shout out to them because I only had $200 in cash. And when I needed $350 to pay for the hotel. And for four days, they didn't ask me for it once. Obviously, I couldn't have left the country without paying them. But where in the UK are you going to go and pay for a hotel and you have problems with your money? Are they going to let you check in and then get into your room? And no, they're going to have you sitting waiting. That's just my experience and my opinion, obviously. And the plugs are UK standard plugs. So the same plugs as the UK, which was absolutely mega. But again, what an unbelievable experience. And if you're looking for excitement and adventure, book a flight to Iraq and go and see for yourself. Well, this was just a short video, just to give you a brief idea of my feelings about Iraq and my experience. And I think based on what I've said, you can kind of gather that I am fairly, if not extremely happy with my trip to Iraq. I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, show some support. There's 92% of people watching my videos are unsubscribed. And I know maybe I have to work a little bit harder for you to get you to click that button, but if you could find it in your heart just to subscribe, it would make my day. And until the next one, take it easy.